When we look at the mole concept, there are two parts. You have Avogadro's number, and then you have the molar mass part, okay? And Avogadro's number, that's going to allow us to convert from particles to moles and moles to particles. And this little graphic helps you figure out what to do. It's, it's an aid to help you set up your dimensional analysis. You don't need it at all if you understand dimensional analysis. But it's kind of a crutch to help you figure out where to put Avogadro's number at, okay? So if we're going from moles to particles, we follow the bottom arrow, we have to multiply by Avogadro's number, right? <laughs> if we're going from particles to moles, then we divide by Avogadro's number. And the particles, by particles I mean atoms if it's an element, molecules if it's a covalent compound, and formula units if it's an ionic compound. And remember that Avogadro's number is equal to, yeah, 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd, okay, particles per mole. So one mole of anything is equal to 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd particles, right? <clears throat> if, then we have the molar mass. Molar mass allows us to convert from moles to grams and grams to moles. So if we're going from moles to grams, we multiply by the molar mass. If we're going from grams to moles, we divide by the molar mass. Remember, the molar mass is just the average atomic mass, but in units of grams per mole. So if it's just the element, it's whatever that number is up there. Instead of AMUs, it's grams per mole. If we're looking at a compound, we add all the elements together, right? And that's going to give us a total, and then we put the units on it, grams per mole. We can also think of everything that we do in chemistry that has numbers, okay? With respect to chemical formulas and chemical equations, that all represents moles. So, you used to think that H2O, okay, that's two hydrogen atoms, one oxygen atom, right? Now you can think of it in terms of, well, that's two moles of hydrogen and one mole of oxygen. And it's in one mole of water. Or if we have LA, you know, Li2SO4, two moles of lithium, one mole of sulfur, four moles of oxygen, in one mole of lithium sulfate. So we can use that as a conversion as well. <clears throat> um, when we're doing Avogadro's numbers conversions, right, <clears throat> doesn't matter what we're doing, it's just like if we use the word dozen. If you say a dozen donuts, that's 12 donuts. If you say a dozen cars, that's 12 cars. If you say a mole of anything, it's 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd particles of that substance. And again, if it's an element, it's atoms. If it's a covalent compound, it's molecules. If it's an ionic compound, it's formal units. All right? Now, on sampling learning, they use 6.02. Because Avogadro's numbers actually has a lot more digits than 6.022. Uh, but sampling learning, they round at the three uh, significant figures. And so uh, be careful with that. Sometimes you have to use 6.02 in sampling. Okay? <clears throat> so some people don't like doing dimensional analysis. One of the things that you can do is treat it like a um, mathematical formula. Right? So the number of particles is equal to moles times Avogadro's number. And if you need the amount of moles, that's the number of particles divided by Avogadro's number. All right? So that's just a backup if you don't like doing dimensional analysis. So let's look at our first example. <clears throat> if we have 10 moles of glucose, how many moles of each element are present in this sample? So we have a compound, but we're looking for moles of the element. So what are we going to use to do that? In general, what are we going to use? We're not going to use Avogadro's number because we're not looking mass. for particles. We're not using molar mass. Grams. We're not grams. grams. <laughs> That's a unit. What's the other thing we just talked about? <coughs> Subscripts, someone said it. Subscripts. So if we have 10 moles of glucose, right, our conversion factors are basically 
one mole of glucose is equal to six moles of carbon is equal to 12 moles of hydrogen is equal to six moles of oxygen. Those are all equal to each other because glucose is our compound. Then in our compound, we have six carbons, right? In our compound, we have 12 hydrogens. And in our compound, we have six oxygens. Right. Exactly. So and the way to show that, right, you have to plug in your conversion factor. So for every one mole of glucose, we have six moles of carbon. Moles of glucose cancel out. Six times 10 is 60. Six is an exact number. 10 has four significant figures. So it's gonna be good to four sig figs. 60 moles of carbon. If we're doing hydrogen, 10 moles of glucose. <coughs> Well, <clears throat> that would be the easy way to do it. Let me show, show you the hard way to do it. I mean, we don't have to start with glucose. We can start with 60 moles of carbon. Okay? And for every 6 moles of carbon, we have 12 moles of hydrogen. So moles carbon cancel out. Right? 12 divided by 6 is 2. 2 times 60 is 120. <clears throat> Next example. How many examples, or how many examples? How many <laughs> atoms are in a sample of uranium containing 4.33 moles of uranium? So now we want to go from moles <coughs> to atoms, which is particles, right? So we got to use Avogadro's number. So we're going to start with our moles on top. Now we always start, almost always, you're going to start with the number that you're given. So we'll start with our moles, uranium on top. <clears throat> and then Avogadro's number in this situation is going to be one mole of uranium equals 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd uranium atoms. So which part do we have to put on the bottom? The one mole of uranium. One mole. So we put our one mole uranium on the bottom and our 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd uh, uranium <laughs> atoms on top. Moles uranium cancel out. <coughs> Times 10. So you should get 2.6075 uh, 26 times 10 to the 24th power. Uranium atom. Okay, so then we have to round it. It's going to be good to three significant figures. So 2.61 times 10 to the 24th uranium atoms. Let's look at the next one. Now we're starting with <coughs> molecules. And we're trying to go to what? Uh, <coughs> trying to go to moles. Okay. Means you gotta use so we got to use Avogadro's number again. So we're going to start with a million. What's one way to write a million? One, zero, zero. What's an easier, what's a faster way? One mil. Ten to the six. Okay. Ten to the six. Molecules. Uh, sucrose. So our conversion is going to be one mole of sucrose is equal to 6.022 
times 10 to the 23rd molecules of sucrose. So which part goes on the bottom now? Molecules. So Avogadro's number goes on the bottom, right? So you should get one point six six zero five seven seven eight eight times ten to the negative eighteenth. Okay, moles of sucrose. Now, this one, uh, the significant figures are a little squirrely because they don't give us a decimal number. They just say one million, okay? And so we have to basically, we have to go with the, um, kind of the safest bet and assume that it only has one significant figure, okay? So if we round it to one significant figure, the next number uh, is a six, which is greater than five, so that one rounds up to a two. So we get two times 10 to the negative 18th moles of sucrose. Let's look at this one. How many molecules of water are in 23.89 moles of water? Uh, and then the second question is, how many atoms of hydrogen are in that? So we want to go from moles to what? Molecules. Molecules. And then from molecules to atoms. Now to go from moles to molecules, what are we going to use? Avogadro's number, right? And then to go from molecules to atoms, what do we use? What did we use a while ago when we had moles of the compound and we needed moles oh, of the atoms? Yeah, subscripts. Okay? So we can use our subscripts to change it, okay, from molecules to atoms. So for Avogadro's number, you know, one mole of H2O is 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of H2O. And then our subscripts, since we're looking for hydrogen, right? For every one molecule of hydrogen, or my bad, water, how many hydrogens do we have? Two. So two atoms. Hydrogen. So we can use the subscripts whether we're talking about atoms and molecules or we're talking about moles of the compound and moles of the element. Okay. <clears throat> so we're going to start with the number we're given And then so going from moles to molecules, we're going to use Avogadro's number. So which part goes on the bottom? Avogadro's number. No. no. One. One mole. One mole. So our moles of uh, water are going to cancel out. Now, that answers our first question. So we want to go ahead and solve for that. And so we get one point, and I'm going to answer it down here so I can continue to use my dimensional analysis line for my next question. You always put your calculator answer and your rounded answer. So that's going to be good to four significant figures because 23.89 has four and Avogadro's number has four. Wait, what number did you get? 1.4. I got 1.4386558 times 10 to the 25th. So then I'm going to round out the four, so then I get... 1.439 times 10 to the 25th molecules. So that answers the first question. So to answer the second question, we just continue on with our second conversion factor. We use the subscripts 
And our subscripts tell us that for every one molecule of water, right, we have two atoms of hydrogen. <laughs> and so our water molecules cancel out. So we just take our answer and multiply by two. And that two is an exact number, right? So it has an infinite number of significant figures. So this one is also going to have four significant figures. So remember, when we multiply or divide, we go with the least number of sig figs. So 2.877 times 10 to the 25th atoms of hydrogen. How many moles of sulfur does 3.89 times 10 to the 25th sulfur atoms make? So we're going from atoms to moles. And so what are we going to use? We use Avogadro's number, right? And so, and in this case, Avogadro's number is going to be one mole of sulfur is equal to 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd uh, atoms of sulfur. So we start with the number that we're given in the problem. And then which part goes on the bottom? All right, Avogadro's number. So atom and sulfur cancel out. And I get 64.5964.7957 moles of sulfur. And then how many significant figures is it going to be good to? Three. Because 3.89 has three. Avogadro's number has four. So we count over three. We're rounding at the five. Next number is greater than five. So 64.6 moles of sulfur. Okay, so next one. How many moles of oxygen are in 1.99 times 10 to 23rd carbon dioxide molecules? So we're changing molecules to moles. Yeah. We are. But do you have to do particles in between? And we're going to use oxygen. We're going molecules of CO2, right? To moles of CO2, but what are we asking for? Uh, moles, of uh, moles of oxygen. Moles of oxygen. So we got to go from molecules of CO2 to moles of CO2 and from moles of CO2 to moles of oxygen. Or we can go from molecules of CO2 to atoms of oxygen and <coughs> moles of oxygen. Either way, you're going to get the same answer. Okay? <clears throat> now to go from molecules to moles, what do we use? Avogadro's number, right? To go from molecules to atoms in that molecule, what do we use? No subscript. Oh subscript. Okay. <coughs> so we put we start with the number we're given. Since we got molecules on top, Avogadro's number goes on the bottom. That changes the moles of CO2. And we use the subscripts. Okay. In carbon dioxide, for every one CO2, there's two O's. Right? And so that should just be O, not O2. <clears throat> so then we have to, uh, for every one mole of CO2, there's two moles of oxygen. So we plug that in 0 0.66090909 0 0 9, 67. Moles of oxygen. 